About six months ago, my friend Jeremy asked if we could make a, um, I guess you would call it a, a catch-all box or a pocket empty box, just something very simple to put on his computer desk to empty his pockets at the end of the day. And what we came up with is a box made from curly maple and walnut, and the bottom is a solid raised panel made from matching curly maple. Fast forward six months, and his side media business is growing quite well. Uh, he's been traveling a lot to document drag race events in both photo and video format, and because he's always mobile and because photo and video take up quite a lot of digital space these days, he uses a lot of external hard drives. It's just just the most convenient thing for his workflow. And the goal for this project was to come up with a solution to organize his external hard drives while still matching the box that we previously made. It doesn't really match his desk, but going forward, this is just the style that we'd like to continue. And we started the design process with pencil and paper to brainstorm and basically just get the concept down. Then headed to SketchUp to refine the concept. And the first shape we liked was kind of based on a rectangle similar in size to the hard drives, but with one corner missing to allow a, I guess, a grab location so you could grab the hard drives. So we stacked five of these high and thought, what if we duplicate the shape to the other side, making it symmetrical and then doubling the capacity? It wouldn't be too much work to do that. Then we thought, well, decreasing the height of the center partition would increase the airflow for heat dissipation. And then we thought, well, the center divider should be removed completely as the hard drives are always just going to be stationary and sitting in place. And a feature to prevent them from touching is kind of unnecessary. Then we thought if we extend the sides two inches further back, then the back panel would also allow room for cable management on the back side if desired. So with the design in hand, I picked out two boards that would match the previous project. A piece of curly maple that I've had for about a year now, just kicking around in the shop, and a piece of walnut that would be just wide enough for the sides of this project. My milling process always starts at the miter saw station, so I began with the walnut and Jeremy followed that with the curly maple. Now the rest of the lumber milling is pretty much visually self-explanatory, so I'll take the opportunity to mention that anytime you have a guest working in the shop, be very mindful of their skill set and never just assume that they know how to safely use every tool. It was a conversation that we had previously and we both understood the personal limitations with each tool. Just because somebody says that they've used a tool before doesn't mean that they know how to safely operate it or wouldn't benefit from some type of guidance from someone more experienced using that tool. Bottom line, just be safe anytime you have anybody else in the shop using your tools. So once all the parts were sized, we did a quick mock-up just holding the pieces in place to get a glance at how it would look in the end because sometimes when you do this, you notice something that you may want to change. In this case, everything looked okay. So we set up the dado stack and the table saw and made a couple test passes to dial in the width to match our material. Then cut all of the rabbits and dados. And there was seven rabbits and dados total on each sideboard, which meant there were 14 in total. And one of the benefits of using dado joinery is that once the appropriate width is dialed in on your dado stack for the material you're running, then all of the dados are really quick and really easy. It's as, basically as easy as just moving the fence on the table saw. Another quick mock-up of the case after the dados, and by this time it was getting late in the day. We were both pretty much running out of steam and we still had a lot of work left to do. So we decided on a design change to simplify the front. Instead of a multiple curve type front, we thought a single curve on the front would have the same functionality of exposing one of the hard drive corners while still breaking up the, you know, the, the rigid rectangle look. After determining and drawing an appropriate radius on the front of the top board, I taped together all of the pieces and followed the line at the bandsaw to cut them all out at the same time, and then used a spoke shave to clean all of the cut faces. Jeremy's a bit of a perfectionist and does automotive bodywork for a living, so he wanted to take it a step further with the sanding. So he sanded. And sanded and sanded, and sanded, and sanded. To allow the wires to pass through the back side, we drilled one inch diameter holes a little bit below center of each of the drive bays. And having them a little bit below center allows the cord to be pushed through the back while sliding on the shelf, which makes it a little bit easier to uh, manage rather than trying to elevate the cord to pass through a hole if that hole was 
centered vertically in the drive bay opening. Before assembly, we added a slight round over to the front edges of all of the parts and then glued everything together. And you know, it's been quite a while since I've made a project utilizing dados and rabbits as the main joinery. And it was just so refreshing when you have to, when you go to assemble something and everything just, everything just clicks together. It's like, it's kind of like using Legos. It just reminds me of building with Legos other than the fact that, you know, you still have to use clamps. Once the glue had dried, I did a final surface prep, including flushing up all of the rear faces with a block plane. And then we finally finished it off with a couple coats of shellac and man, curly maple and walnut just look so killer together. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, this was one of those pieces I got done and I was just kind of, uh, I, I kind of didn't want to let it go. It just looks so good. The last thing we did was buff out the finish with some steel wool to even everything out and then added some furniture wax to bring it to a shine that Jeremy wanted as he was going to take this project home with him. So I recently asked all of my email subscribers if there was any interest in a set of plans for this. And just as I suspected, there was very little interest in a dedicated set of plans. So I did not take the time to make a full set of plans for this. However, if you are interested in the SketchUp file I used to design this project, you can download it for free on my website and, you know, stretch it as needed or modify it as needed to maybe make it into a paper divider or anything else, really. It's just a really universal, simple design that can be modified as needed. And speaking of my email, be sure to swing by my website and sign up for my email newsletters. I have that set up so that you only get notified of the stuff that you are actually interested in. Plus, I like to throw in coupons and extra stuff like that here and there. But I think that wraps up this one. So hopefully you're able to get some ideas from this. And you guys take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you next time.